Hi and welcome! In this video, we're introducing the concept of diagonalization. So to talk about diagonalization, we need to first know what a diagonal matrix is. So a diagonal matrix typically corresponds to a square matrix where we have n by n as our dimensions. And it's a diagonal matrix if there are only non-zero entries on the diagonal. So this means if we look at the diagonal that goes from the top left to the bottom right, these are the entries that have values that aren't zero, and then all other entries in the matrix are zero. So there's zeros everywhere except on this diagonal. Then we say that a matrix A is diagonalizable if there is a diagonal matrix D that looks like what we've just said for a diagonal matrix, and then an invertible matrix P such that we can write A as P times D times P inverse. So we're looking at this specific type of matrix A that has this property where we can break it down into a product of three matrices, where it's P, D, P inverse. And the special property here is that that middle matrix D is diagonal. So, all right, why do we care about being able to diagonalize a matrix and write it in this way? In particular, this is especially powerful because it simplifies some other computations that would normally be really complicated. So one example of this is suppose we take the matrix A and we want to raise it to the kth power. So we're taking k copies of the matrix A and multiplying them together. Now, depending on the size of A and how much data we have in A, this could be really intense as a computation. We need to take A and multiply it by itself k times. This is lots of multiplications to do over and over again. But this is where diagonalization comes in handy. So if we can write A as P, D, P inverse, then this computation becomes much simpler. So now if we look at A to the kth power and we replace A with P, D, P inverse, then we can simplify this by writing out P, D, P inverse being multiplied by itself K times. And you'll notice that when we take away the parentheses, when we have each of these P, D, P inverses matching up, we have a P inverse P. So this P inverse P that repeats itself throughout this multiplication is going to go away because a matrix times its inverse is just the identity matrix, which is like multiplying by one. So every time we have this P inverse P matching up, this becomes a identity matrix and then it goes away. So what we're left with is P's and P inverse on the very outside and then K copies of D on the inside. So we do P times k copies of d times p inverse. Now, this might not seem easier, but we can at least rewrite it as p d to the kth power times p inverse. And you'll see here that computing d to the kth power is much more simple, and that's because it's a diagonal matrix. So if we have d, and let's say in a four by four case, it's diagonal with entries a, b, c, d on the diagonal and everything else zeros, Let's first square D, so do D squared, and doing this computation will hopefully illustrate how much easier D to the kth power can be. So with D squared, if I write D times D here, I'm going to take the first row of D, so it's A with zeros, and then multiply it by the columns of the matrix I'm multiplying by, which is also D. So I'm getting A squared in the first position, then I'm getting 0, 0, and 0 in the next positions. Now, if I repeat this with the row with B, so I'm getting zero, then B squared, and zero, zero, and I repeat this down. So I'm getting zero, zero, C squared, zero, and then zero, 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 D squared. So basically, multiplying these two matrices together is just like multiplying those diagonal elements. So we do A squared, B squared, C squared, D squared. And having zeros everywhere else means that all of the other entries stay as zero. So you can imagine as we continue to multiply D by itself, when we get to D to the kth power, all we're needing to do is raise the elements on the diagonal to the kth power as well. So we'd have A to the K, B to the K, C to the K, and D to the K on the diagonal. 
And doing this computation where we just have individual elements that we're raising to a power is so much easier than taking a whole matrix and multiplying it by itself k times, where we'd have many multiplications and additions going on in that operation. This is very simple. All we do is take these elements on the diagonal and raise them to a power. All right. So this is just one reason why we might want to take a matrix A and diagonalize it, meaning we write it as P, D, P inverse. To close out this video, let me show you an example of what this looks like with actual matrices. So let's confirm that A is diagonalizable with the matrices D equals 2, 0, 0, 5, and P equals negative 1, 2, 1, 1. And we're starting with the matrix A, which is equal to 4, 2, 1, 3. So we're gonna confirm that A can be diagonalized with these two matrices, and then we're also going to find A to the fifth power using our diagonalization. So to start, we're going to show that A is equal to P, D, P inverse. So I'm going to compute P times D times P inverse and make sure we get A. In order to do this, we'll need the inverse matrix of P, so let's compute that now. That's a good review. To find the inverse of P, remember our formula, it's one over AD minus BC. And then we swap the A and the D elements and we put negatives on the B and the C elements. So for our matrix, this is one over negative one minus two. And then in my matrix, I'm going to swap the A and the D and put negatives on the B and the C. So in my first row, I have one negative two. And in the second row, I have negative one, one. So now I just need to simplify. On the outside, I'm getting my scalar is negative one third, and we'll just distribute that into the matrix. So in the first row, I'm getting negative one third, two thirds. In the second row, I'm getting one third, one third. And this is my inverse matrix. Okay, so we have P, D, and P inverse. Let's multiply them together and make sure we're getting A. So I'll write P, D, and P inverse here. And we can do the multiplication in whatever order we want. So we could do P times D first, or we could do D times P inverse first. Remember, you can't swap the locations, so you can't really do P times P inverse first. That's not how this works. But we can at least pick which two we want to multiply first. So I'll do P times D. So I'm getting negative 2 plus 0 and 0 plus 10 in my first row then two plus zero and zero plus five in my second row. And then I have P inverse here still. I'll just simplify before we keep going. So I'm getting negative two, 10, two, five for my first product. And now we're gonna take this matrix and multiply it by P inverse. So there's some fractions here, but it should work out nicely. For my first row, I'm getting two thirds plus 10 thirds, and then negative four thirds plus 10 thirds. In the second row, I'm getting negative two thirds plus five thirds, and then four thirds plus five thirds. So I just need to simplify, and remember, we're trying to show this is equal to A, and I told you what A was at the beginning. In my first row, I'm getting 12 thirds and six thirds. In the second row, I'm getting three thirds and nine thirds. And these fractions then simplify to four, two, one, three, which is exactly what we started with for A. So what this shows is that we can write A, we can basically decompose it into this P times D times P inverse. And the special part here is that that D matrix is diagonal, where the only elements that are non-zero are on the diagonal. So to wrap this up, we're going to find A to the fifth power, just to show a little bit how this can be useful. So instead of taking A and multiplying it by itself five times, we're going to do P, D, P inverse to the fifth power. And remember, we showed that this is the same as finding P times D to the fifth power times P inverse. So I have P, D to the fifth power, P inverse. Computing D to the fifth power just means taking those diagonal elements and raising them to the fifth power. So I'm really just doing two to the fifth and phi to the fifth. Now, using a calculator, I have computed what those are. So I'm getting 32 and 3,125. Now I just have these three matrices being multiplied together. We just need to do that multiplication and we should get A to the fifth power. 
So I'll start with the leftmost matrices. I'm getting negative 32 plus 0 and 0 plus 6,250. That's my first row. Then in the second row, I'm getting 32 plus 0 and 0 plus 3,125. So this simplifies to negative 32, 6,250 and 32, 3,125. And we just need to do this next multiplication. These numbers are going to get pretty big, but that's okay. So doing the rest of the multiplication, I'm doing 32 over 3 plus 6,250 over 3. Then also in the first row, I have negative 64 over 3 plus 6,250 over 3. This isn't super interesting to say all this out, so hopefully you can follow along okay. Then in the second row, I have negative 32 over 3 plus 3,125 over 3. And then I have 64 over 3 plus 3,125 over 3. Now I'm just adding the fractions together and simplifying. So in the first row, I'm getting 6,282 over 3 and 6,186 over 3. Then the second row, I have 3,093 over 3 and 3,189 over 3. And luckily, all of these big numbers are divisible by 3, so I'm getting my final matrix, which is 2,094, 2,062 in my first row, and then 1,031 and 1,063 in my second row. So, okay, not the most fun computation, but if you even took just a few seconds and tried to do a to the fifth power by hand, you'll find that doing all the multiplication just really takes a while. We just did the fifth power here, but you can imagine if you had a much bigger power, this would be a lot of work by hand without the diagonal matrix. Okay, that's an introduction into diagonalization and why we might care about it. In the following videos, we'll start learning how to diagonalize a matrix and how to determine whether or not that's even something we can do if we're given a matrix A. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.